Hey, what's up guys? Hard Leg Joe here, coming at you with a what a deck profile for Zodiac Boar Bro Beatdown. I'm just going to go through everything in here, and then I'll explain how it works. So for monsters, we're playing exclusively Zodiacs. We've got three Thoroughblade, three Whiptail, three Cataroost, three Buddy Blast, three Ram Ram, and one Rat Peer. For spells, we've got one Raigeki, three Wild Nature's Release, two Lightning Vortex, three Terraforming, one Foolish Burial, two Twin Twisters, 3 Zodiac Barrage, 3 Fire Formation Tenki, and 3 Zodiac Sign. Our only trap, 3 copies of Zodiac Combo. Our extra deck is one each of Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King, Baguska, Heartland Draco, Castell, Diamond Direwolf, 3 Tiger Mortar, 2 Hammer Kong, 3 Chakanine, and 2 Borbo. The side deck I'll go over in a little bit. So this is a pure Zodiac deck, which is quite different from the meta version you're used to seeing. Uh, if you played Zodiac either against them or with them when they were at full power, you're probably used to the advantage version of the deck, where the whole point is to just make Dryden as quickly as possible with as few cards as possible, draw some cards, set a bunch of cards, and just end with a with a board that can disrupt your opponent with a whole bunch of traps and, and a Dryden. This deck is more about making one really big monster that is nigh invincible with a huge amount of attack that can attack directly. And a lot of the Zodiac cards actually work fairly well towards that win condition. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the archetype in general, they're, they're an Ixie based archetype. All their Ixie monsters have a similar summoning of condition, which is once per turn, you can summon a copy of this monster by using one Zodiac monster you control with a different name as Ixie material, and any materials attached to it also become attached to that card. In addition, this card gains attack and defense equal to the attack and defense of all the Zodiac monsters attached to it as material. So already you can kind of see how you can get some pretty ridiculous attack values if you're getting a whole bunch of materials on one Ixie monster. Then in addition, all of these have effects where if they're attached to an Ixie monster, that Ixie monster gains an effect. With Thoroughblade, you do piercing damage. With Whiptail, uh, whatever monster that you attack... Uh, after damage calculation, you banish that monster. Cataroos, Buddy Blast, and Ram Ram all have similar defensive effects, which are if that XC monster would be targeted by a certain kind of effect, you can detach in order to negate the activation. With Ram Ram, it's traps, Bunny Blast is spells, and Cataroost is monster effects. So if you can get all three of these, you effectively prevent your Zodiacs from being targeted. Anytime they would be targeted by anything, you can detach to negate. In addition, we're also playing their Field Spell. It gives all Zodiacs 300 attack and defense. More importantly, uh, monsters your opponent control cannot target Beast Warrior types for attacks, except for the one with the highest attack. And once per turn, if a Zodiac monster or monsters you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can destroy one monster in your hand or the field instead of that Zodiac monster. This is one of those cards that wasn't played in the meta variant of Zoos, but in this it really helps because you're already preventing targeting, and this prevents destruction. Now in addition to their summoning effect and their attack gaining effects, each of the Ixie monsters has their own effect. Hammer Kong's probably the least useful. Your opponent cannot target other Zodiac monsters except for him, but he has to have material on him, and he detaches a material during the end phase. Before Master Rule 4, he could be pretty decent, because you could put him on the field in addition to something else you had. As it stands, he's pretty much just a stepping stone. Most likely, it's going to be Tiger Mortar. Tiger Mortar, you can detach a material in order to target a Zodiac in the graveyard and attach it to your monster as a material. So most likely, what you want to do is put Hammer Kong on first, then this. You'll detach the Hammer Kong. Because it has zero attack and defense, your monster won't lose any attack and defense. And then you can get one of your other monsters from the graveyard and attach it to give you even more attack, even more defense. And we have quite a few ways to put monsters in the graveyard with Twin Twisters, with Lightning Vortex, and just with our monster effects in general. Thoroughblade in particular, if it's normal or special summoned, you can discard a Zodiac card, and if you do, draw one card. Which again is just a great starting point if you have this and any other Zodiac. You can play Thoroughblade, discard the other Zodiac, Hammer Kong, into Tiger Mortar, and then attach that Zodiac that you just discarded. Second most useful is probably Chakanine. You can detach one to summon a Zodiac from your graveyard, but it has its effects negated and it can't be used as Ixie material for a summon. This is useful in a few situations. First of all, you can just put a monster on the field for your Zodiac sign to use. You can also just summon something that you can't attach in order to have a defense wall if you think that your 
going to be destroyed in the next turn. You can also use it to summon Whiptail. Whiptail is during either player's turn, you can target one Beast Warrior Ixie and attach it from your hand or field as Ixie material. This is the only Zodiac that you can just sort of attach from the field. Its effects will be negated when you initially summon it, but it's only until the end of the turn. So if you have an extra one of these in the graveyard, you can summon it, and then immediately as soon as your opponent's turn starts, you can attach this from the field to the monster you have to give it more attack and allow it to banish things. Then finally, our last one is Borbo, uh, the, the one that it's named after. And his main effect is just that he can attack directly. He does have an initial effect that when he inflicts battle damage and he has 12 or more XD materials, you can send all cards on your opponent's hand and field to the graveyard and then shift this to defense position. Which, if you can get that high, that's pretty much a win condition on its own. Most of the time, though, you can actually OTK once you get enough materials. Not just because of the ridiculous attack values that you get from these monsters, but also because of our spicy tech card, Wild Nature's Release. This is target one beast or beast warrior monster. It gains attack equal to its current defense until the end phase, but then during the end phase, destroy it. This is great because oftentimes you'll have a monster with like 3,000 attack, 4,000 defense. Adding them together, you'll have 7, 8,000 attack, and you can just attack it directly for game. And even if you can't get game, even if you just get like 6,000 attack, you can prevent it from being destroyed either by having the field spell out or just summoning another one of your Ixie monsters on top of your Borbo after you're done attacking. And that's pretty much our win condition. It, it's kind of difficult to do, but with the right hand, you can get pretty much every main deck card attached to Borbo, make him unable to be targeted, make him unable to be destroyed by card effects, give him like 6,000 attacks so that even Utopia the Lightning can't get over him, and every turn you're attacking directly, so that they can't kaiju it in two turns, they're just dead. Everything else in this deck just kind of works with that. We're playing the one Raigeki, because I'm already playing some field wipes, I figured why not. Uh, it may be a little cheesy, but this deck kind of needs it. It's not really super powerful, especially compared to the old Zodiacs. It's more of a troll deck that gets occasional wins. So I didn't feel that bad about playing a one-of in here. Uh, we've got our terraforming to search our Zodiac sign. We've got this to clear the field, because we don't have any removal without D Drydent. Uh, our one trap, target one Zodiac monster you control, attach a Zodiac from your deck to that monster as material, which is just really good both for surprising your opponent during the battle phase, and just for adding more things in general. If you see they're going to summon a Cyber Dragon Infinity, you can attach a Cluckle, or, I'm sorry, a Cataroos directly from your deck to prevent that. Also, if it's in the graveyard, except the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can target five Zodiacs in your graveyard with different names, shuffle them into the deck, and draw one card, which can be really good if your first couple turns don't go very well. Oftentimes you'll use like every card in the extra deck within two turns. So this can shuffle everything back into the extra deck and draw you more cards. Uh, we're playing Fire Formation Tenki just because it searches any Beast Warrior monster and all the Zodiacs are Beast Warriors. Plus it gives them an extra 100 attack, which is never, never hurtful. And finally, Zodiac Barrage. Target one face-up card you control, destroy it, and if you do, special summon a Zodiac from your deck. You can only use this effect of Barrage once per turn. If this card is destroyed by a card effect, you can target a Zodiac you control and attach it as material. A lot of people in the early version would just uh, activate this, use the effect on itself to summon any Zodiac, and you can do that if you don't have any Zodiacs in your hand. Uh, what I like to do, if possible, especially if you start with Tenki, you can activate your Tenki, activate Barrage, blow up Tenki to summon anything, then normal summon. Uh, most of these Zodiacs, if you're going to summon them normally, they're going to take five monsters, three, three. But Chalk and I, you can do with two. So if you want to get a head start on just getting as much attack as possible, you can normal summon a Zodiac, summon another one with Barrage, and then put them together to make Chalk and I. So it's just a more effective way to stack things up. Finally, I didn't mention it earlier, but in addition to having defensive effects, Cataroos, Bunny Blask, and Ram Ram all have effects when they're destroyed by battle or card effect. Ram Ram can target a Zodiac in the graveyard except himself and summon it. Bunny Blast can target a Zodiac except itself and add it to the hand. And Cataroos can target a Zodiac except itself and shuffle it into the deck. These are all pretty decent effects, especially when combined with the Field Spell and with Zodiac Barrage. Uh, not shuffling into the deck so much, although you can get extra deck monsters back, but adding a uh, Whip Tail back to your hand or summoning it onto the field using Ram Ram or Bunny Blast are pretty great. So if you have an extra Ram Ram and you can summon it with Chalkanine, and then next turn use Barrage on it, 
or use it if it would get destroyed, or just keep this in your hand. There's a lot of different options for things you can do, a lot of different synergies for spicy plays, if you happen to have these with some of your other cards. The rest of our extra deck is just sort of a combination of rank 4 monsters that you can make. Uh, this doesn't have a lot of special summoning, but again, if you start with Barrage, something you can blow up, and then another monster, you can make something like Tiger King that can negate the effects of all be every monster except for Beast Warrior monsters until the end of your opponent's turn. You can make Baguska to stall. Because we have a lot of face-up cards, you can make Heartland Draco and attack for that 2,000 extra you need for game. Beast Warrior synergy with Diamond Direwolf. Castell's just a staple. But if you want, you can always add in more Zodiacs. If uh, Broad Bull or Dryden, the other two Zodiac Ixies that are currently banned, ever come off the list, you can add them in here. And you could just as easily put Link Monsters in here if you want to try to swarm more. Mrs. Radiant works pretty well, because all of these are Earth Monsters, but I just didn't particularly find that it was all that useful. And finally, we have the side deck. And I actually built a side deck where... If you wanted to try to play this more competitively in a more meta environment, uh, I, I feel like this does have a decent chance at being rogue just because of making Borbo nearly invincible, making him have so much attack. Uh, you just have to really protect him more with hand traps. And you could just as easily take out the cheesy texts like Wild Nature's Release. You could take out the Lightning Vortexes if you don't think they're going to work, the Twin Twisters, uh, maybe even the, the Rat Pier, which I didn't mention. It has zero attack, zero defense. Not really good for summoning. The only reason I play it is because it's another Zodiac name. And uh, when it's normal summoned, you can send a Zodiac from your deck to the graveyard. So it's pretty decent for getting your plays started. But you could just as easily take it out, replace it with your Ash Blossom, replace it with your Ghost Ogre, even your Psyframe Gear Gamma, because having your opening plays Ash Blossomed is really difficult. Uh, it's not too hard to take five cards out, put in five of these, and really have a pretty decent deck on your hands. Likewise, just having another Twin Twisters here for if you go against decks that have a lot of spell traps that you want to remove. Uh, or, or Gaioku. Activate this card by targeting a set spell trap. Your opponent cannot activate that target in response to this. And while this is on the field, that set card cannot be activated. Also, all Beast Warriors gain 100 attack. Uh, this is a pretty neat tech because it prevents your opponent from doing anything in the first place. And it fills up their spell trap zones. It helps boost your attack ever so slightly, and it's a good target for Zodiac Barrage if your opponent gets rid of the card that it's targeting, or if you're just not worried about it anymore. Finally, I just want to mention Stoic Challenge. Uh, you can only control one Stoic Challenge. Equip it to a face-up Ixie monster that has material, gain 600 attack for every material attached to that monster. Any battle damage your opponent takes from this battle and their monster is doubled, but its effects cannot be activated. And then during your opponent's end phase, Send this card to the graveyard. When this card leaves the field, destroy the equipped monster. This is another alternative for Wild Nature's release. It can actually give them even more attack than, than this would, uh, just because that's 600 for every material, especially if you get up to, like, 10, 11 materials. We're talking about a ridiculous amount of attack being added onto things. And while it stops activated effects, uh, Borbo's effect to attack directly is a continuous effect. So you can still attack directly with this. Honestly, the only reason I didn't play this is because in testing, it got Twin Twistered a couple of times when I was going to attack. This, once you activate it, it can't be stopped. But these are pretty much interchangeable. Both are about as good. And in either case, you can just summon another Ixie monster on top of the one equipped with this. And then you don't have to worry about being destroyed when it leaves the field. So there you go, my attempt at a Zodiac deck. I actually quite like the Zodiacs both as far as art style and sort of their play style. It's really a shame that they kind of got roped into what they were, this weird advantage deck that was just about drawing a whole bunch of cards. Hopefully one day we'll get Broad Bull back, or, or maybe Dryden't or something like that. And I can try these again, because I think this would be really fun if it had more bite, more removal in the form of Dryden't, or more search power in the form of Broad Bull. Either one would be really nice. Uh, regardless, I hope you enjoyed this, especially if you liked playing Zodiacs, Maybe now you see another variant. Actually, I actually saw a video recently where they were talking about how Zodiacs are, are essentially useless now. They can't do anything. They can do some stuff. It's just very different from how you're used to playing them. And it's, it's not nearly as good as they used to be. But you can still OTK, which is more you could say for a lot of decks that got hit by the ban list. But anyway, I've rambled on enough. I hope you enjoy. Until next time, good luck and have fun.